So how do we awaken, harness, and eventually use our yoga power? In Sanskrit, they call it prana. In the Chinese culture, they refer to it as qi. And there's an even more concentrated, powerful energy called the Kundalini Shakti. This is a new energy in the big picture of things, yoga being 6,000 years old. The concept of the Kundalini Shakti is only about 1,000 years old. How do we awaken that energy? So yoga power, my teacher would talk about it all the time. In another lineage, Barabunda Birch wrote a beautiful book called Power Yoga back in the mid 90s, and it took off as a big bestseller. Johnny Kest used the phrase power yoga, Baron Baptiste used the phrase power yoga. We, we switch it around, we say yoga power. So what is that? First of all, we can harness it in three ways, physically, mentally, and spiritually. You can throw emotionally in there too. But we have to understand the concept of the nadis. This is a really important concept in the subject of Hatha yoga. Many yoga teachers don't talk about it. People don't even really understand what it is. The nadis are channels. Some say there are 300,000. The common number, I think, is 72,000. There's a lot. You can't really measure how many nadis are. I have a saying there's really no definitive law of the spirit. But there's a lot of these channels. They're physical and ethereal channels or conduits that flow around us and through us. And as we open up the physical nadis, the blood and oxygen can flow through. As we open up the ethereal nadis, the prana shakti, the prana and the kundalini shakti now have a passageway to flow through. Now before we continue, I want you to hit the subscribe button, smash the like button if you're enjoying this video. If you want to learn all about hot yoga, learn about tutorials and flows, hit the subscribe button, the like button, and hit the notification bell. You get notified when I post a new video. How is this going to help your yoga practice become a better yoga practitioner? And one of the reasons why the yoga exercise is such a phenomenal exercise is the way we're moving all areas of the body, especially all the twists that we do. When we do side twists and we do spine twist poses. We're accessing very hard to get to places. So as we open up the body physically, the connective tissue, we start to manipulate the skeletal system, then the nadis begin to open. And as the nadis begin to open, we can now start to realize and access this yogic power. So what is the pranic energy anyway? Let's go back to the prana for a second. You can take a dead body and give it water and food and oxygen and it's still dead. What keeps us alive? There's another energy, a very powerful energy called the pranic energy. That's the life force energy. It's not just in our individual bodies, it's all around us and through us. Does that sound familiar? If you are a Star Wars fan, George Lucas was actually inspired by the yogis to come up with the concept of Star Wars, especially the concept of the force. Use the force, Luke. The force. It's around us. It's through us. And then continuing on our Star Trek journey in the Tantric tradition, as the yogi gets more powerful, and these powers they call the yogic cities, as the yogi gets more powerful, they say, beware. Do not use the yogic powers for your own personal gain. Use it to serve humanity. Sound familiar? That's like going to the dark side of the force. As you get more powerful, you don't want to use it for your own personal gain. I am your father. Darth Vader. So let's talk about the physical First, I mean, let's face it, most people come to our yoga class because they want to get stronger, they want to get more flexible. Some, of course, come to relieve stress and mental tension, but primarily it's the physical intention. So one of the main concepts to understand in this yoga posture, there's, there's a whole bunch of them. What one main one was what my teacher and Bishnu Ghosh used to talk about all the time. Contraction, relaxation. Contraction is the Shiva energy. Relaxation is the Shakti energy. Ha, ta, yang, Yin. So when we're in a pose like, let's say, for example, cobra pose, we're lifting our upper body off the floor. We're contracting the lower back. We're actually cutting off the circulation in the lower back while we hold the position. And now when we release out of the pose, all the blood and oxygen are beginning to flow into that lower back area to bring healing to open up the blockages in the muscles, to open up the blockages in the connective tissue. Now let's look at locust pose. I consider the cobra and locust to be a seesaw effect. In the locust pose, we're lifting the lower back off the floor. Therefore, the contraction is in the upper back and in the shoulders. We're cutting off the circulation to that area in this pose. And when we release out of it, all the circulation flows back into the upper back to revitalize, to replenish, to reorganize the cells, to bring healing, blood and oxygen into that area. Contraction, relaxation. It's a big part of the yoga concept, the mechanics of the yogic asana. 
There was an international incident back in the 1980s. I forget what year it is. I'll look it up and flash it on the screen later on. It was about this little baby. Her name was Jessica and she was caught in this mine. She was caught in this hole in the mine somewhere. And she was stuck in that hole for a long time. Her leg was stuck, so therefore the blood and oxygen was cut off from that area in her body. When they were finally, there was this miracle, they released baby Jessica out of that hole and the whole world rejoiced. It was wonderful. The first thing they did when they took baby Jessica to the hospital, they put her on this machine that pumped oxygen into that area to revive and to revitalize it. That's the exact concept of what I'm talking about, the contraction relaxation. We do it in yoga, not as extreme. We're not going to contract it for a couple days like poor baby Jessica had it, but it's the exact same concept. So we're in a pose, let's say like full locus. We come up into the pose. We're contracting the middle back muscles. We're cutting off that blood and oxygen from the middle back muscles. Now when we release out of it, all the blood and oxygen flow back into that area, once again, to revive, to revitalize, to reorganize. Shirley MacLaine was a big yoga student. For those of you who are a little bit younger, she was a superstar back in the 60s and the 70s, 80s a little bit. She won Best Supporting Actor for the movie Terms of Endearment, and she was a big yoga fanatic, big Bikram yoga fanatic, and the concept of contraction relaxation. She said, it's the most nourishing thing the body can sustain. So now let's talk about the mental and eventually the, the emotional side of the coin of how we can access our yogic power and understand it. It's understanding this concept. You can do the yogic postures. You can come in. You can feel great. You can have this in your daily routine and you feel wonderful and amazing. But when you understand the concept of contraction relaxation, you understand the concept of how we are manipulating the blood and oxygen into the body, into these nadis, your mental awareness will exaggerate the phenomenon. So for example, it's not just in every pose. And hot yoga, we do about 45 to 55 minutes of standing poses and then we relax down into our first shavasana. I consider that to be the second most important moment of the class. Why is that? Because we've been contracting the body. We've been contracting and relaxing, contracting and relaxing and reaching all those areas of the body. Now the transition from the standing to the floor is so profound because as we lay in shavasana, we can just imagine all that blood and oxygen flowing through through us and it's smart. It realizes and it knows what areas need more attention, what areas are off, what areas are blocked, what areas are stuck, and it flows into those areas with more intention. So that transition from the standing to the floor is phenomenal. And then the, the most important, that was the second most, what's the most important? It's the last shavasana. The Yangar says you should lay in shavasana, your last shavasana for 20 minutes. I mean, for your yoga studio owner, that might not be a good use of your time. Usually the, the classes turn over within 10, 15 minutes. In the old days, they would go back to back. We would go at nine o'clock, 10, 30, 12 o'clock. We wouldn't even skip a beat. But if you can, take a longer shavasana and take advantage of that time after the class and just let yourself just completely let go. Surrender to the floor. Let the floor, I used to say it in my shavasana, let the floor take you and float or melt or whatever image in your mind allows you to have a complete sense of relaxation. So the point is, so from the mental side, when we understand the concept of how we're manipulating the blood and oxygen, it again, accelerates the phenomenon. That's what we want to do. Have that awareness and bring that into your practice. So right onto this particular coin of the mental is also the emotional. Sometimes, and we can't really prove this, it's really possibly a theory, but I think it's factual. We actually lock in traumatic experiences into the body. We know shoulders and neck, we can lock a lot of tension, but we also can lock a lot of tension into the hips. And as we begin to have these profound openings and we break through in postures through our practice and whatever style of yoga you do, sometimes we can release that emotional tension. I've had many times people would hysterically cry in class. They would go outside and have this complete emotional breakdown, but it was more of an emotional release because all that trauma started to release the body. There was one famous actress in California in Beverly Hills that would take Bikram's class all the time. I won't mention her name. She passed away recently. I would see her on occasion go outside and just cry hysterically. Cry hysterically. I know actresses sometimes emote a lot easier, but the point is, could have been attached to an emotional traumatic experience she had locked in her body and now it releases and opens and it's really a tremendous healing, a tremendous healing from a cellular level. So now as we get into the spiritual side of yoga, it's not just the blood and oxygen that's flowing through the physical channels or the physical nadis, it's the prana and eventually the kundalini shakti that flows through the ethereal channels. That's where the real nadis are in the, in the ethereal. So that's why we have 72,000. So we awaken the prana 
push it into the body, eventually the Kundalini Shakti, that's going to take a little time and more intention, but eventually those energies begin to awaken and that's how we realize our yogic power. So moving on to the spiritual side, yogas, physical, mental, and spiritual, moving on to the spiritual side and back to the nadis. So these 72,000 channels in our bodies, there are three main ones. The right side is called the pingala. The left side is called the ida. And the center channel, which is considered to be Goraksha's main intention in creating hatha yoga. If you're hatha yoga teachers and Bikram Barkin and Vinyasa, Yenga, or Ashtanga, you are Hatha Yoga teachers. You should know who Garaksha is. He's the creator of Hatha Yoga. His main intention in developing this particular style of yoga was to awaken, back to the Kundalini Shakti again, the Kundalini Shakti up that center channel, what's known as the Sushumna Nadi. So the, of all the 72,000, these are the three main ones. Most people live within the side channels. The yogi aspires to bring the energy and harness it into that center channel. And as we harness that energy, first the pranic energy into the center channel or the sushumna nadi, we begin to realize our yogic power. That's how we begin to get in touch with this phenomenal energy we have inside of us that can be awakened through the physical practice and the mental awareness. And now we harness it through the spiritual channels. There's a technique called alternate nostril breathing. I did a video on it a few years ago. Check it out after you watch this one. And the technique is you hold with your ring finger the left nostril, you inhale through the right nostril. And you close the right nostril, you exhale through the left. Keep the right closed, inhale through the left, close the left, exhale through the right, and you do that in a cycle. One of the reasons why they do alternate nostril breathing, the slowing of the breath slows the heart rate, calms the mind. But one of the other reasons from the spiritual side, it begins to clear out the side channels, the pingala and the ida, because if those side channels are stuck and the energy is now not able to flow into that center channel, and that's, say, where the average person lives. And the average person, the kundalini shakti, lays latent. It lays asleep at the very base of the spine in the root chakra. The yogi begins to aspire to awaken it. So that was Goraksha's intention. And the metaphor that I like to use that I learned from Georg Fierenstein, who wrote the wonderful book, Yoga Tradition, like the hammer hits the anvil to forcefully, that's why he chose the word Hatha Yoga, which means forceful, to forcefully awaken the Kundalini Shakti up the center channel, we call the Sushumna Nadi. We clear out the side channels for the energy to free flow. So Kundalini means she that coils. It's a serpent-like energy and feminine energy. We awaken that Kundalini Shakti up that center channel and the Kundalini takes you to the third eye or the sixth chakra. And exercise, we know exercise is gonna keep us healthy, but the yogic exercise goes beyond because it's opening up the body, it's creating a range of motion that allows the energy to continue to free flow. A great metaphor my teacher Bikram used to say, it's like the engine of a car. If the engine is dirty, it's clogged, eventually that engine is gonna stop running. But as we clean the engines, we get a wonderfully clean engine, now it can work beautifully. All the fluids, the oil, the gasoline can flow through the engine unobstructed. It's the same thing with the body. We're clearing out all the blockages that get clogged inside the body, and that's how we're going to stay healthy into our older age. But we're not going to just live a long life. We're going to have a higher quality of life because we're not going to be restricted by the body breaking down. So we want to open up these channels of the body, these physical and ethereal nadis, 72,000 of them. Vishnu Ghosh had this equation. I don't know how he came up with it. He said, every yoga class that you do, if you're doing a yoga class, let's say today, the true benefit will come five years down the line in a residual. So if you're doing yoga for at least five years, the wonderful thing is that you're going to have the immediate effect of the yoga class. You know how wonderfully euphoric you can be when you come out of that yoga room, especially if you're doing a forceful style of yoga, like Barkin and Bikram and Vinyasa. You feel amazing afterwards. So yeah, you're going to have the immediate benefit from today, but you're going to have this extraordinary residual effect in the future. The main purpose of the video is that you understand what these nadis are, because that's the key. The mental part is so important. The physical is going to happen automatically, but the more you're connected with it mentally, the more you understand the process what's going on inside the body, the mechanics of the pose, you're able to exaggerate that experience or what I call that phenomenon. We're opening up the channels, we're opening up the nadis, the physical ethereal conduits. We're bringing not just the blood and oxygen into the body, but the prana and the kundalini shakti eventually into those nadis. And that's what makes the difference. As we awaken and become aware of this energy, we start to realize our yogic power. And we take that energy on the mat, off the mat, 
into our lives. So one, you're gonna, your yoga practice is gonna improve dramatically, but two, it's gonna also improve your life. It's gonna transform your life because you're gonna take it off the mat into your world and see the magic. So that's our episode for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell, hit the like button if you enjoyed it. And if you want to learn all about hot yoga, yoga tutorials, yoga flows, hit the like button, subscribe button, and the subscribe button, and the subscribe right now, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye, everyone.